Did you know that it was an African who founded the city of Chicago in America? Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please support us by taking a few seconds to click on the subscribe button. Thank you. Today, we are celebrating the life of Jean-Baptiste Point du Sabo. Unfortunately, very little is known about uh, du Sabo's life. Some accounts speculate that he was born around 1745 in the village of uh, St. Uh, Mark on the island of uh, Saint-Domingue. Now, Saint-Domingue is a country now known as Haiti. His ancestry on his mother's side was African. Some sources say she was a slave, while some others think she might have been a former slave. On his father's side, um, he's believed to have been, um, his father is believed to have been a French sailor who then took Du Sabo to France, where he, wo who he was educated. He was fluent in French and also acquired uh, knowledge of French art and culture by living in France. He, in addition, he was able to speak English and, uh, and Spanish. Now, as a young man, Du Sabo began his working life on his father's ships as a, as a seaman. During one of um, their voyages to um, New Orleans, which was still a French colony, his ship suffered some mishap and Du Sable got injured. While in New Orleans, he ran into some trouble with the Spanish who were trying to overthrow the French from New Orleans. Because um, at that time, um, these European countries were forever... Um, fighting with each other over the acquisition of um, various parts of um, of North America. So at the point, uh, at this particular point um, in, in um, Du Sable's history, the Spanish were trying to overtake New Orleans from the French. Now, um, and then he got into trouble with them, probably because he was a French-speaking person. And then for the same reason of uh, being a French speaker, he was, um, he was protected by some French priests, probably because, uh, because he spoke their, their language. After he recovered from his uh, injuries, uh, the injuries which he sustained at sea, he then headed towards the interior of the American continent, following the Mississippi River. He first settled briefly in Peoria, in an area which is now part of the state of Illinois in the 1770s. Uh, and then, and so he, he settled briefly in Peoria, where he integrated with the indigenous Potawatomi people and even married one of them. His wife was a uh, Potawatomi and her name was Kitihawa, although she later changed and acquired the name Catherine when she became baptized. Now, from the Potawatomi, he found his way towards the Great uh, Lakes area and ended up in the present-day Chicago, area that we now know as Chicago. At the time, the area was uninhabited and uninhabitable because it was damp, barren, and extremely marshy with an acrid kind of smell. The area smelled foul, you know. Now, some sources uh, believe that this was why the indigenous people around the area called the area S. Chicago. S. Chicago has been translated by some to mean a place of bland smells, uh, a place of uh, bad smells, or land of the wild onions because of the way it smelled. An anecdotal submission by Margaret Burroughs, however, suggests that because the marshland smelled so bad, it made people sneeze, and that Eshkago sounds close enough to the sound of um, that a person makes when they sneeze, and that this might have been why the indigenous people who lived in the vicinity called it Eshkago. <laughs> what we do know 
is that over time, the name evolved into Chicago, um, the name that the city is now called. Um, the poor nature of East Chicago made it uninhabitable and unattractive um, to Europeans who might have settled there. Now, um, however, Jean-Baptiste du Sabo saw potential and value in the land as soon as he saw it. On getting there, once again, he became made friends with the indigenous people around the area um, because, like I said, nobody lived in the marshland area. Um, so, and these indigenous people that he befriended allowed him to establish the first permanent home in the marshland. Now, the area where he built his uh, establishment is the site of the current Tribune Tower in downtown Chicago. This was no small achievement, and the cabin that uh, Dusabu built was a substantial structure. The home that he built on the north bank of the Chicago River had about 800 acres of land. The main building had five bedrooms and all the amenities that were available at the time. He also started trading by selling tools to the indigenous people who trapped animals, which he then bought from them um, to be processed. Um, he also gradually developed a trading post, a smokehouse, um, a bakehouse, a dairy, a mill, a horse table, and a barn. In addition to other outbuildings, um, so he developed the area in uh, to into a collection of very of you know thriving businesses. So he continued to buy uh, trapped animals and raw materials from the indigenous people who lived around him. And then he used these um, animals and the agricultural products uh, to make and things like flour, uh, processed meat, and, uh, and fur, fur materials. Um, now, the location of the Sabo's uh, trading post allowed it to attract customers from places as far away as present-day Detroit and uh, even, um, even Canada. With the, with the trade that uh, Dusabul established, East Chicago grew into a key depot and a main trading uh, route for the area. He was extremely successful, and his home is said to have been filled with fine furniture and paintings, indicating that the family had become prosperous. His trading post, which was the, which then became the major trade supply depot for all kinds of traders, uh, woodsmen, um, trappers, you know, was, you know, just continued to grow from from, from year to year. So his his foresight and it speaks uh, of his foresight, which allowed him to recognize the potential of the location as strategic, you know, in spite of it being a smelly area. You know, and that is what now allowed the city of Chicago to grow into a major deep depot and a key trading post, which over time grew into the city of Chicago that we know today. Now, with his business turning him into a wealthy man, he continued to expand uh, by acquiring herds of uh, livestock, poultry, and pigs. Now, let's pause for a moment. Can you imagine the impact that his, 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 his successful business would have had on other people in the, in the vicinity? This, is also, this also marks him as a different kind of a pioneer than uh, most Europeans who've, you know, who, who settled in, um, in North America and other, other colonies. So unlike them, you know, who would, when they got to a place, find ways to destroy and overwhelm the indigenous people. Dusabu befriended them and so that as his business prospered, they also prospered. 
Now, and he became so successful that the British considered him a big enough threat to detain him for five years during the Revolutionary War because he was a French uh, sympathizer and he also and he supported America's desire to free itself from British colonization. Incidentally, or rather significantly, Du Sable's granddaughter, who was born in 1796, was the first child in, uh, to be born in what today is the great city of Chicago. And unfortunately, and uh, almost mysteriously, on the 7th of May, 1800, for reasons which are still not clear today, Du Sable sold his home and thriving business to a white guy. And I think he is reported to have sold it for uh, about $8,200. Now, we, we don't know why, but uh, <laughs> we can only marvel at what would have made him, you know, sell a, a thriving and successful uh, business. Um, he died on the 28th of August, 1818 in St. Charles, Missouri. And then um, there's really no indication that he was as successful in Missouri, or that he died a, um, a successful uh, businessman. Thanks for being a part of the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please don't forget that we can only continue this series with your support. We cannot continue if you don't support us. So please support us by subscribing and giving us a thumbs up and then also by sharing our videos with your friends and contacts. See you next time.